Welcome back to the channel, everyone. So, today's video, I'm going to be answering all of your rock-related questions that you sent me. So, uh, hanging out in, in the shop. Here's the shop. You don't normally get to see all of this, but uh, this is how we're doing it. Uh, one take. One take on this. Let's hop right into it. So, this should be pretty good. I've got them all printed out here. <sighs> got my beverage. This rocks. Well, uh, she ask, uh, asks, what inspired you guys to start rock hounding? Well, um, years and years ago, right, uh, we went to the Oregon coast, found some little tiny beach agates that were teeny tiny, um, probably in the grand scheme of things, not all that impressive. And, well, I was hooked. I was hooked, you know, something about it just a... Uh, just peeled to me, I guess. Um, I think, uh, you know, kind of <laughs> leave it there on that one. Um, Stephanie Rocks asked, if used as recommended, how long does a vibratory tumbler bowl last? Well, Stephanie, Stephanie's in Germany, I believe. Um, well, here um, we have a, the kind of the, the popular one out there is the Lotto. Uh, I'll put a picture in. The Lotto. <laughs> uh, well, the Lotto, um, those bowls, the rubber, like, sphere that gets shook um, lasts a very long time. I'm not one to do rock tumbling, so um, I'm not going to be the expert on it. I don't exactly know. But, um, you know, uh, back when I had a Lortone tumbler and I ran that thing for two years, uh, 24 hours a day for two years, um, the only thing that wore out on it was I had to change out a belt once, once which is like a dollar. And then um, there's a rubber gasket on the inside of the aluminum lid. And that got a little pinhole in it, and I played, replaced that for, I think, $4. So they last a very, very long time. Um, you know, you're not going to have to be servicing the motors in them, stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I'm not the tumbler expert. Um, if somebody uh, has some more experience with the lottos, I'll definitely put that info in down, down below. Um, Mary Lynn asks, uh, I'd like to try my hands at using a trim saw. Is this something I can learn on my own, or should I uh, try to find a club or another source for in-person instruction? Uh, you can absolutely learn how to use a trim saw all by yourself. Um, to give you an idea, so trim saws, um, I guess maybe if you're not aware, they could be a little misleading. Um, let, me, let me grab something as an example. Okay. Example, right? We have a, here's my worm drive circular saw, right? This type of saw has teeth, right? These are sharp, a little carbide tooth, right? This will rip into you and uh, should be used uh, with, with caution, right? You know, you can uh, mess yourself up. However, your lapidary trim saws the blades on these are more uh, like a grinding wheel, right? You see that? See, we, we just have diamond here. So this can be spinning and you can touch it and uh, it's, not going to, it's not going to hurt you. So you can absolutely just buy a trim saw and start cutting. Um, you know, there's uh, some little, little things that you'd want to want to I guess watch out for you know um but um some basic tool safety stuff and you should be fine and if anybody's actually interested i could do some separate videos for you know i have a trim saw i got the big oil slab saw and we can uh you know really kind of get into it <clears throat> she also asks um could you provide resources about the maintenance and repair of tumblers I had to replace a motor and ran into other problems. I didn't find much help on YouTube, even on Michigan Rocks. I love the content and look forward to your site. Uh, I am making a website, people. <laughs> I'm making a website. It's going to be rad when it is up. So um, maintenance of tumblers. Um, 
I mean, let's not talk about the actual tumble or barrel and talk about the motors. Um, I wonder if what you have is one of the Harbor Freights. Or, uh, generally speaking, the more expensive tumblers are be mostly maintenance free. I mean, a little bit of uh, oil on any of the bearing surfaces. Um, you know, I don't have any more tumbler stuff. I kind of got out of it. My friend Nicholas, uh, he's really into tumblers, and um, you know, maybe uh, we can have him here on the currently rock hounding show to to kind of go over more in depth some of the tumbler stuff because he's got a really cool tumbling setup and uh yeah and that um nicholas <laughs> uh speak of the devil uh non non-rock topic here um but what is the no cats stencil behind you at the end of the video for maybe it's rock related okay so uh let's let's look at this this stencil right here, the the no the no cats. Um, this does this is very much so rock related, and it's I I think it's funny. Okay, um, so a uh, long time ago, I used to uh, hang out with this guy, and in his shop, right in his shop, he's a mechanic. All kinds of things were labeled, right, and um, you know, cause funny stuff. Everything was labeled, and uh, I I liked that. You know, and, uh, you know, I, I kind of still do it somewhat. Like, you know, I have, like, little things of rocks. I, I spray paint my, my currently rock hounding on them. Uh, stuff like that. So, the no cats. I'm going to have to take you off the tripod. Let me go and show you exactly what that's about. Here is my oil slab saw. So, you know, it's got a... Uh, low viscosity mineral oil in it. So when you take your rocks out, they're covered in oil. Well, the way you uh, <laughs> the way you get that oil off is, well, kitty litter, right? You throw your rocks, your slabs, whatever, in the cat litter to absorb the oil. And I made this uh, custom uh, <laughs> litter box, but no cats allowed in this one. Um, <laughs> thankfully, there's no outdoor cats here. So I mean I think it's I think it's funny to to label stuff I guess yeah you know no cats why not you got all these stencil letters like put them put them to use <sighs> single speed asks do you worry about your safety around other people when you're out rock hunting I absolutely do not and I don't think uh, you know hmm. There have been some cases of more predatory people in the rock hounding world. Um, obviously, you don't want to be hanging around with dirt bags. Um, know who you're hanging out with, I guess. A little bit, at least. Um, yeah, no, I worry about being in, in cities, right? I, uh, you know, before, before doing the rock hounding thing, um, before meeting Sarah, I did all kinds of, of traveling. Uh, you know, I did hitchhiking. I hopped freight trains for a long time. And uh, your problem is never usually out in the middle of nowhere. Your problem is typically going to be close in. So, you know, um, that said, um, do do what you need to do to uh, protect yourself. Make yourself feel safe, you know. Um, if that means self-defense, going with people you know, um things like that. You know, living here in the Western United States, um, we carry bear spray. Um, it's very common to see other people with bear spray. I mean, um, I'm not, in, I'm not particularly afraid of bears. Um, what I'm kind of more concerned with living in Northeast Washington would be moose, uh, during the rut season. Um, if anybody knows anything about, uh, a moose, uh, a male moose during rutting season is completely insane. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you go get yourself some uh, some moose moose spray. Um, otherwise, you know, I wouldn't be too concerned. And if you are, uh, you know, uh, rock clubs, that's a great way. I mean, they put together, most rock clubs will put together su sp summertime field trips. You can get to know some people there in kind of a more controlled setting if that's something that you're, you're concerned with. Um, 
You know, John, John says, uh, when you say fortification, what does that mean? Okay, um, back here is an example of some fortification. Okay, um, you know, should have had some water. That, those lines, right? That is fortification. Block me out, there we go. That's fortification. So um, that happens when you have um, minerals washing into a void and they, there's variants in them and you get that that banding, that line, those lines, right? That's the fortification when you hear people talking about that. It's banding. Um, Dan asks, uh, was your dog Leica named after the camera? There is a somewhat popular camera um, that takes, I guess, I'm not a photographer, uh, maybe I'm gonna butcher this. There's a somewhat popular camera type called a Leica and it takes more like artistic shots, I guess. I Leica is spelled L-A-I-K-A. You have to think about it. Uh, and she's named after the first dog in space. Um, a Russian dog named Leica. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, I got a couple of things here from James. Um, he's got uh, so three questions. <laughs> uh, what do you look for in a microscope when studying rocks? And what size blade should I get for a slab saw? I'm thinking 18 or 20. Uh, when it comes to saws, buy the biggest saw that you can possibly afford, right? You can cut little stuff on a big saw, but not the other way around. Um, I mean, if I, if money, no object, I'm having a 36 inch saw hydraulically auto fed six speed type setup. Unfortunately, Size and money exist in my world, so no giant saws, right? Um, and uh, let's see, what else? What is um, so a microscope? Um, really, uh, any any microscope is better than no microscope, I guess. I mean, so a, a while back, I bought one of those cheap USB microscopes where, like, you just plug it in your computer. They're like twenty bucks on Amazon. And it was horrifically disappointing, as should be expected, right? Um, so, uh, you know, I think you, you want at least for mineral identification, um, probably something in the 20 to 60 power. Um, you know, going over 120 power in a microscope for looking at minerals I, would be useful, but then you start to add money exponentially. Um, and... Uh, for me, for what I do, I mean, if you're just looking for your own personal kind of use, uh, having the ability to hook up a camera may not be worth it. For me, it's very worth it. Um, you know, I want to be able to share the, the microscope photos on, on the channel. So having a mount for it, already having one, or um, something like that. Um, you know, I've seen that there's some good reviews of some of the slightly nicer USB microscopes that are in that like $100 to $200 price range, but I'm not an expert in it. I mean, I don't have one. Um, my buddy, um, I'm drawing a blank here. <laughs> I, have my, I have a friend that lives on the west side who, uh, he's very into microscopes and he is the person that I defer to for all of my questions as I start to shop for one. <clears throat> uh, also, he asks, um, what do you want to go rock counting in Greenland? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I mean, every single country in the world has really cool rocks. And, you know, that said, like, I don't really feel the need to do a bunch of international traveling. I mean, I think, um, it, you know, there's a lot of issues with the minerals that you'd find, bringing them back to America. There's like customs and, and all of that. Um, Mexico would be high up on there, um, but also there's issues with that. And then uh, of course, going to China would be awesome. That's where like all that stuff that's crazy and international um, that you see like on eBay and stuff, all that stuff's coming from China. Uh, if you could actually go and access those mines, that would be super, super cool. 
Um, but I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Patrick, Patrick, uh, he asks top five locations in the state and places you want to go. Uh, have you ever found something considerably valuable? Um, well, uh, Patrick, so um, I think my top five in the state and the top five for your average person would probably be very different. Um, you know, uh, I live in Washington state, so uh, I think for a lot of people just kind of getting into rock counting, uh, Saddle Mountain for Petrified Wood, uh, Hanson Creek for Crystals, um, dang, what's that beach on the coast uh, that everybody goes to? There's a beach on the coast that everybody goes to to pick up little carnelian agates, um, and uh, man, I'm drawing some blanks. I'm, I have a hard time with, uh, you know, people, I just be like, what's your favorite this? Um yeah, and uh, let's see, two more good locations for people to go. Those, how about those three? Crystals, um, petrified wood, little agates. Me, on the other hand, uh, my favorite spots in the state are in Northeast Washington. We um, are of some of the most sparsely populated counties um, with the most rich and dense assortment of minerals. So um, as you, I'm sure you guys are aware if you're watching this uh, this far in, uh, we, we do go kind of rock counting for that traditional stuff, but I also like just collecting specimens and uh, really cool minerals. So, um, you know, uh, man, yeah, I... I don't know. Um, anyways, we have a lot of really great stuff to offer out here. I mean, just like we have adventuring, we have Galenas, we have all kinds of really cool stuff in Northeast Washington, and we're just now scratching the surface of it. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson, he's got his very own YouTube channel. Favorite kind of rock? Basalt, of course. It's like the only rock worth caring about. Anybody that says otherwise you're you're crazy now um you can like whatever it is you want i'm i'm partial to uh i guess igneous extrusive rocks lava rocks i like them i like studying them i like all of the stuff that comes along along with it uh as far as the types of minerals go you know a lot of a lot of good stuff that can be found with your uh igneous rocks um <laughs> uh ragnar ragnar rocks another guy with a youtube channel uh pretty good by the way um he uh he sent me one of his little uh his little guys that right there little ragnar uh, uh, you gotta block my face over your camera is gonna be like i want to focus on it anyways um so uh ragnar um do you have any areas outside of northeast washington that you plan on exploring this summer uh, do you have any travel restrictions or opposition to camping we uh we camp almost exclusively um well that's a weird way of saying that we anytime you see us out um more than a couple hours three hours or so away from northeast washington we're probably camping um we sleep in our subaru outback and uh i'm in the process of building out my ford f-150 to be a bigger better traveling rig um, i have a rooftop tent on order we're doing that i'm building a bed rack welding doing all that stuff for that so no i mean uh sleeping out's the way to go public lands all that um yeah as far as getting out of northeast washington um well we've already spent some time in idaho um i have plans on heading back to utah this summer um the Oregon, Nevada border, um, spending some more time in central Oregon, and then also southern Idaho. That's probably going to be, that's a lot of big trips, you know, I mean, it, it does, it does add up, and well, the cost of fuel is not getting, getting any lower, um, you know, it's here, what, I filled up my truck, and over $100, over $100 to fill the truck, so. <clears throat> um, 
K K asks, uh, what are your thoughts, if any, on polishing rocks to display their natural beauty versus carving rocks into representative or functional shapes? For instance, sepitarian eggs, agates, jasper, animals, jade nephrite boxes, uh, thing, things like that. Um, teach their own. Do whatever you like. You know, if you like um, an agate that's carved into a little bear, <sighs> You have at it. You get the, the nice thing with rock hounding and lapidary. You get to do as you please. Enjoy what you want to enjoy, and uh, you know, let let the cards cards fall where they fall. I mean, no no judgment here. I mean, I think I personally like doing um, taking a rough rock, cut it, cut a couple of slabs out of it, maybe polish the cut face on the rock and then make a cab i got a bunch of that stuff in the house so then you can kind of see it rough polished face cab i think it makes for a nice uh display like on a shelf so not that much more not that much more i know you see me flipping a page here <laughs> um so uh got a question here are, are you ever going to come and meet up with Vugmeister out here in Western Washington? Uh, Vugmeister, um, I'm going to just call him Jim. Okay, so Jim is a cool guy. He's got his own channel out there. Um, he spends a lot of time in Western Washington. He's getting different crystals, uh, goes up to Hanson. He's out there with his son, Aiden, and they hit up all kinds of spots. They, they do some traveling. Um, I would... I'm down to down to down to go out there, hang out, um, see what Western Washington has to offer. But you know, I mean, we're at video two hundred and fifteen, two twenty or so here on this channel, and uh, I feel like I've barely scraped the surface of what Northeast Washington actually has to offer. Um, you know, we're just, the list of spots to go is endless. Um, you know, the only thing holding me back from uh, doing more is fuel. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, who? H U? Who? Sorry if I'm butchering that. Um, he asks uh, different creative ways to. Uh, different? I know how to read people. <laughs> different creative ways to use finds or ways that you've decorated with rocks. Um, wow. Uh, I mean, I really just decorate shelves, have shelves in the house. And I'm going to show the collection at some point here, maybe when we hit 10,000 subscribers, which is going to, it's happening quickly. It's happening quickly. Um, show you what I consider to be the good rocks that make it into the house, you know? Um, Far less than what you're probably thinking. Um, yeah, there are not a lot of rocks in the house. I find that over time, like, my standards have certainly changed. You know, the... the... Well, yeah, I mean, we take less and less when we go places and leave more outside or... You know, stuff that doesn't make the cut gets ditched, and you know, I I don't want I don't want to be that person that's got a uh, heap and piles of rocks everywhere. So that um, biscuit EMT, uh, what makes so much of the material around here parallelogram shape? So parallelograms like rectangle, that's like that, um, and then he has a. Uh, Part two is, can you suggest some jig for a small saw that could replicate those angles? I'm doing it by hand and eye. Some of the cuts are really off. Um, so I'm a little confused by your question there, buddy. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the material is that you're looking at. That is parallelogram. Um, but uh, some rocks and minerals do have very unique shapes like parallelogram and uh, if you're trying to cut it along those planes on a saw you're going to probably want to attempt to match those with like a series of wooden wedges so i don't know what type of saw you're using maybe you're using like a tile saw 
you could always um on a table saw cut lengthwise like down like a piece of wood two by four type of thing and try to match that let's say 30 degree angle so that when you send your rock through your blade you're now cutting at a 30 degree angle maybe something like that could 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 work um i hope that hope that answers your questions um you know it's fun to actually well think some of this stuff through um i appreciate you for uh coming by listen listen to all this off to see you on the next one everybody take care thank you so much for watching my entire video if you like the content that i'm producing here on this channel and you want to support the content even further you can do so by becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below the membership comes with a growing library of exclusive videos and just great other extra content. So I'll just follow the links down below and I will see you on the next video.